Hello, welcome back to the channel. So I posted this on my YouTube and my Instagram and that's what we're doing today. I'm going to answer all your questions regarding real estate investing, saving money and the whole theme of this video which is financial independence, retiring early and also I got some questions regarding nursing here in New Zealand. I'm super excited to do this video because I haven't done anything like this before and I think it's a great way to connect with you guys. So without further ado, I'm going to answer all your questions starting from Kara Crooks. So she asked three questions. I'm going to answer the first two because I think they're very similar. I'm going to hit it with the same answer. What's your mortgage structure and how have you structured your properties for accounting or tax purposes? So all my properties, including personal and investment properties, are principal and interest loans and that's an investment strategy that I chose. It's something I'm comfortable with. Other investors will do the interest only loan and that works as well. If you're thinking about buying investment properties, definitely get accountant. It's super worth it. They'll answer all your questions for you. They'll explain everything and you can choose from there which investment strategy you're comfortable with. And for me, it's principal and interest loan. The second question from Kara is, do you use an LTC? And no, we don't because there used to be so many advantages of establishing an LTC but now there's very little difference and it's very easy to claim back for a tax even though you don't have an LTC. Like I've said before definitely get accountant because it's super worth it and that's a business expense anyway and you'll get that money back in the form of paying less tax. Aya Harisco has asked can you share more of the FIRE movement and your personal plan on early retirement? I just completed my emergency fund and I'm trying to come up with a good investment plan to achieve my FI number. Thanks. So first of all, congratulations to Aya for putting up an emergency fund. It's a really great achievement. And to any of you guys who don't know, FI is financial independence. It's financial independence, retire early. It's a movement for people who want to retire early. I feel like I can put in one entire video my entire retirement plan. But to answer Aya's question, I'm going to condense it into one paragraph. To be honest, I think I'm the type of person who will never retire because I love my job. I love of working. I love the structure of work, like getting up and going to work. I love all that. And I think I'll be super bored if I were to fully retire. So for me, let's just call it a semi-retirement. And in six years times, I think I will be able to fully retire. And that's because of my investments, mainly because of real estate, because my entire portfolio is very heavy on real estate. It was only last year that I started investing in the stock market. The fire number that we're aiming for between me and my husband, is a million New Zealand dollars invested and that's more than enough for us with a 3.5% withdrawal rate per year. It will cover all our living costs, eating out and travel will be super comfortable with that number. If we sell all our real estate now, we're actually very close to that number and my plan is to buy more real estate year after year just to get closer to that goal. Lindo Jolina has asked, if I can invest in stocks or real estate yet, is there any other way to save for early retirement? So if I were in your position, I would save aggressively and cut down all unnecessary spending, like for example, eating out or buying um, hot chocolate from the cafe. It's hot chocolate for me, but coffee for most people because I don't drink coffee. As Dave Ramsey would say, rice and beans. That's all you're eating, rice and beans to cut down on your expenses. Personally, I haven't gone that extreme yet because I was never really in a position wherein I had a lot of bad debt but it's a really good metaphor. I love it. Rice and beans. It's a good metaphor for saying that you should only spend on the bare essentials on, or your bare necessities. Remember, you don't have to live like this for the rest of your life, only until you've reached your certain financial goals because in order to achieve your goals, you need to sacrifice something, right? What I would do with all the money that I save, I would put that in a high interest savings account or in a term deposit. I would actually go bank shopping and see who offers the best interest rates out there. I actually have an entire video about saving money. I'm going to put it right here or in the description box so you can check it out after the video. Omila Bella asks, I would like to know about how to buy or sell stocks, opening accounts, and is there anything that we need to take caution when we are doing, selling, or buying by myself as a beginner investor? So the platform I use here in New Zealand is called Hatch. There are two very popular ones, Hatch and ShareSees, but for me personally, because I invest in large amounts of money, you save so much more in transaction costs and management fee 
through hedge. Share seeds is more for like smaller investors. Like let's say if you want to invest $10 a week, that's a good platform for that. But otherwise, um, use hedge. With regards to being safe in the stock market, I've said this several times before in one of my videos, and that is do a lot of research before you invest into the stock market. People have this misconception that investing in the stock market is like gambling. And I have to admit that I also had that misconception before I dove into this rabbit hole of research into the stocks. And the fact is there are several different ways to invest into the stock market safely. I'm not going into too much detail about that because I already covered it in two of my videos and I'll also link that in the description box so you can check it out after this video. Dolly76 has asked, as owners who would understand how long it takes to create a safe and effective vaccine, 10 to 15 years, will you be taking the experimental mRNA injection that was rushed through in six months? So the short answer is yes, I would take the vaccine. And yes, they did rush the vaccine because we really needed it. But that doesn't mean that they've bypassed safety protocols. So the fastest vaccine on record is actually the mumps vaccine, which was created in four years time. And that was in 1967. So imagine what we can do 33 years later with our advances in technology and novel techniques. I'm actually not surprised that they created this vaccine in under a year. Also, another reason why it's taken so quickly is that the scientists didn't start from scratch. There are actually hundreds of coronaviruses that's been around for 50 years. So yes, I will be taking the vaccine not only for myself, but also for my family, my patients, and my community. I feel like that's a very Miss Universe kind of question. So yes, I also vote world peace. Rima Luvakim has asked, guys, I'm so sorry if I'm murdering your names. She asked, how is nursing work life in New Zealand? So for me personally, my work-life balance is great. I actually don't work full-time. I work part-time and that's because my work is flexible and I'm allowed to. When you visit a certain place, you can actually feel the vibes of it. And if you visit New Zealand, you can certainly feel that it's much more chill, much more laid back here. And I have doctors at work who came from America and they've said that they've migrated to New Zealand because of the work life balance. So definitely in healthcare, the work-life balance is really good. I don't know with other industries because um, I haven't tried it. Lynn SMN has asked, is your income enough to support your cost of living? So yes, my nursing income is more than enough to support my cost of living. That's why I'm able to work part-time while still able to invest in the stock market and real estate. I know other nurses would say otherwise. And I know definitely that if you put kids and family into the equation, that's a different story. But for me personally, I live a very simple life. I hate consumerism, so I don't buy a lot of shit. I spend most of my money on experiences, like for example, travel and eating out and hiking because those are the things that I enjoy doing and also investing. I spend a lot of my money and put it into investments because I love doing that as well. Oli Ball asks, is there any other option to migrate in New Zealand apart from being a student or a nurse from Asia? Yes, definitely. I've met several people now who migrated to New Zealand and they're in the IT profession. So you can Google Essential Skills New Zealand and the website will give you a list of all the migrant workers that New Zealand will accept. Oli has also asked, how much do I need to have in order to survive as a new immigrant in New Zealand? So it's a bit tricky now. So first of all, because of the situation anyone coming into New Zealand will need to spend 5,000 New Zealand dollars for hotel quarantine if you're not a citizen I know that's a lot of money and it's really up to you if you want to spend the money but ever since last year in March we only spent four weeks in strict quarantine and after that, it's been normal life ever since we've been to outdoor concerts and rugby games and art exhibits whatever you can think of it's been normal life ever since and it's up to you if that that's worth 5,000 New Zealand dollars. Regarding cost of living, um, I'm gonna give you a ballpark figure. So let's say you need $250 per week to rent a room and on top of that maybe a hundred New Zealand dollars for groceries and bills so that's 350 New Zealand dollars you multiply that by how many weeks you intend to be not working and maybe on top of that also a thousand New Zealand dollars just as an emergency fund. Thanks to everyone who submitted their questions. If you have any more, put it in the comments below and I'll try my very best to answer them. And I apologize to those questions I didn't answer because I feel like this video was getting really long. And again, thank you guys so much for spending your time with me and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!